Hello and welcome back to CyberZone. I am Samir. Today we'll be going over part two of our PHP test driven development series. And we'll be going over uh, uh, how we can you know set up un for unit testing using PHP unit. So all right, let's continue. Let's go down over here. Um, okay so first thing we need to do is set up a new laravel project and one thing i'd like to say is uh, if you are you know new to using laravel uh, to La laravel framework and also to psp uh, if you're just beginning uh, this uh, course is not uh, going to really help you because uh, we're actually talking about testing here uh, if you want to learn the basics uh, uh, you know you uh, uh, you are you know associated uh, to Take a look at other videos, other tutorial series on YouTube, or even you can just Google it, and and you can come back to learn about testing here. All right, now that is uh, now with that out of the way, um, yeah, I'd like to also say that you know I assume that you'll uh, you know how to set up these things, and uh, uh, we can just move on. So I'll not be doing any explanation for installation steps. Okay let's move on uh yeah i just did this uh, uh installation uh just uh, uh a while ago right here and then uh we have it right here this uh, level five in my d drive and let's uh go and see the next steps yeah we don't need no permissions because we're not on linux i'm using windows right now windows 10 to be exact and let's move on so php in your right so all right let's go over the default folder structure this is shown here and that's the folder structure is under here test uh yep feature and then unit and the example test right here and uh um, i'm using sublime text here as my text editor and you can use anything that you're comfortable with uh, it doesn't have to be sublime text but then the exa the tutorials will be on sublime text it's much easier to use and it's much easy, uh, like really easy to install all right um so let's go back to the article now yeah unit folder and feature folder right so we have this uh, feature folder then we unit folder here of course unit uh, folder is for you know you you we would write unit test and put it inside the unit folder and same with the features feature test so one thing that uh, the article should be suggesting now is yeah we can go ahead and delete the feature folder that's what it says so let's go and follow that because feature test is just functional test but you know laravel says feature but then we'll just want to follow the standard practice of calling it uh, functional and we'll be doing it later so we didn't really need it right now so let's go ahead and just delete it delete this folder yep all right now it says PHP unit file. All right, let's go and check the PHP unit file, which is not inside the test, but outside here on the main root folder, Laravel 5. We have it here, PHP unit.xml. And then we don't need this test sheet tag, XML tag 2. XML tag 2. Let's save it right here. All right, that's done. now let's go and check the next step over here yeah feature folder has been removed test tag has been removed now let's open up the installation folder yep oh uh, yeah the command prompt from the installation folder um laravel 5 yep i have conemu uh, which i'm using as my default command line application um, I mean, uh, sorry, uh, the default you know, command line tool. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, do the vendor slash bin PSP unit. That's where the uh, in the executable is, the bat file for Windows. Okay, so if we just enter here, yep. We get okay one test one assertion awesome so yeah 
so the coloring of course is talking about conemo which i'm using if you just do this on let's say a normal command line we just have to write you know cmd if you do it in like a command prompt just quickly do it i'll show you the reason is there will be no color so we're not using that it's harder to work with no colors when in testing you need the red green refactor and it's much easier to visualize with that uh, let's see if we go to d drive right uh, d largon cd cd largon yeah, let's oops we're on windows so we'll have to do dir yep we're here if we do the command line of the same command for each unit vendor slash bean slash p whoops what happened slash php unit yep you see the same thing but there's no color here so that's the difference so we are here now let's continue with that uh yeah it should be really green but the color scheme is different i guess i probably need to change the theme which you can do from settings then you can change the theme here okay so let's just continue with the same thing for now um so okay let's go down over here yeah so the command line if you want allies you can use mm, allies in konemu uh, you can search that in google how to do that I'm also recently on Windows. I've been using P, you know, Ubuntu for probably more than a year now. So even I have to do the setups. So we can probably go through the setups and things on maybe a different video if you really like. If you would like to see how to do setups and those things, please comment on the uh, this video below, and then I'll be doing a new video for that. Uh, all right so yeah is the article says let's move on yeah awesome mm -hmm. so this is what the test contents right now it's talking about the test if we go and open up the test that we just ran which is up over right uh, here test you need right example test that's what's what this ran and then we get an okay one test one assertion test means this whole test is just contains one test the public function this method and the assertion is counted as this assert true if you had like let's say two asserts it would be two assertions over here let's go and run that again yep one test two assertions yeah now let's remove this Control s save now what does the article tell us to do okay so now it's just describing the test right so i mean the the file what the test contains this example test so let's go over and see here yeah this is the always good to have a namespace so that you do not have you know conflicts when there is like a naming like you may have the same uh, class that's being tested from like for unit tests and a functional test or integration test you'll have a class of names so always good to have namespace and also good when you want to run you know just the unit test so you can just isolate with that now let's go over here uh test test case yeah it's obviously using a class called test case which is provided by laravel itself and it, and the other one is refresh database this is for you know uh mocking the database uh, uh those things uh, this is also provided by laravel which we really don't need these features you know this um, class and even this one test case will just use the php units uh, default class that we can extend from we need these ones for integration or functional test but not right now for unit so since we're doing unit and our philosophy of unit is you should not be you know, interacting with the database and you know uh, interacting with even the uh, the application itself like let's say the laravel but just you know the class itself that we're trying to test it has to be isolated so with with that principle we will remove these lines this line over here instead of this we'll be using uh pg units 
default class uh, let's go over here yeah i just showing you you know this one is just showing you that you know what is inside this test case uh, the test case right here yeah just extending laravel features we just create application for you know just in instantiating the you know the laravel framework itself using the IC container all right uh, after that let's go here yeah same explanation here um, okay so now that when we change the file now we will be using this instead so we can just copy this extension of this you know test case the default test case provided by PHP unit namespace is test unit of course and let's do this boom save what else does the file say example test yeah everything else is same yep now we are going to yeah so let's uh, look at the naming convention or all over the test laravel of course has a different style of you know naming the test which is just you know the camel case but we'll be using this format which is also a standard format and it's much easier you know according to me <laughs> but some people like this is one of the standard formats so most a lot of people use it too and some you just use the snake case like this um this one is you know looks much easier because you you can see that you're testing test and then the name of the method you are testing then you know what is what are we doing with it and what we expect to get out of it so this is you know a clean way of naming tests you can do it this way too but then i just recommend this one i like this one at least well your choice uh, but we'll be following this format for the uh, series all right so for an example yeah this is what it would be example would be test verify user test is the name of the method we're testing and then uh, no i'm sorry the name of the method is verify user that we're testing uh, i just said that you know this is a uh, test all right and then uh, what we are doing with it when called with correct user details so it's passing a correct user details and then uh, that we should receive uh, verified messages when we pass this condition so that's what the format says okay so mm, all right so this is a true method right so it's explaining about a true method yeah you if you're wondering what this is this is just you know asserts asserts are basically a way to you know to check or to uh, you know know if the value that we want is you know correct uh the output that we desire is you know what we wanted so that's what the asserts do they check so there are lots of you know assert statements you should be saying here yeah it's not the only one like assert true assert you know equals uh lots of things yeah i think there are around how much a lot should be around 50 of them yeah so probably around 50 or more than that uh you can go right here through the link provided here and then if i open up here and then if you go to the assert section yeah assertions right here you can see all of them and even the let's see if you see assert contains right what it does uh there's all the descriptions uh, examples so you can check it out here we don't really need to use all of them because you know some of them are for different tasks and different uh, situations so mostly the ones that we use will be probably around nine or ten of them uh, even less for you know a simple test so you don't need to keep everything in mind just use as you want and then just refer to the manual um all right don't worry yeah we don't need to memorize good that's what we just said uh, like this is how that is yeah one thing that's removed i think here is the comments yep we didn't really do commenting instead of comments we use annotations for you know modifying the behavior how the tests run and those things so commenting for you know ex it's not really needed for tests just save and it's not really a practice so let's get rid of that all right this is it for this tutorial uh, i hope you learn how to you know just get your the default test running in laravel and then 
uh, how you know a basic test works that's the uh, test and if you just you know run it how to run the test and what is uh, what assessments are and uh, you know the basic of writing a unit test but we really didn't write really write but then access we went to the example so on the next one we'll go over how to write and then you know write our own test unit test to be exact all right uh, I also recommend you go through the hacker known article which I'll link uh, on the video description below to this article yeah it's so you can you know go and follow the steps and uh, you know maybe something I missed out yeah, you, you can just read over here and um, yeah if you have any you know comments any suggestions please leave them on the video below or you can even leave them uh, on the comment sections under the article um, all right thank you so much and I'll see you on the next one